one of the core aspects of Linux account management is the distinction between privileged and unprivileged users. A privileged user is a user that has been given file and folder permissions that are elevated higher than other users on the system. They have been given the permission to run commands that you wouldn't let a general guest account run, like say, installing and removing packages, altering system files, and things like this. Basically, they have the ability to run potentially dangerous operations, whereas an unprivileged user does not have the privilege to do that. Now, typically when this is discussed, it is discussed in the absolute extremes. We have the root user. They are the super user of the system. They have the permission to do basically anything they want. They can go and install a package or nuke the entire file system and nobody can stop them. They can even go and override the permissions of other users, which in many cases completely destroys the functional operation of your system. And then on the other side, we have your general user account. They don't really need the ability to do any of this. Better yet, they absolutely shouldn't have that power. This user should only have the ability to do what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to have your day-to-day -day operations actually functioning. Running most applications, having a home directory they can save files to, but they can't just go and, you know, start modifying where your bootloader lives. Like, this user doesn't need to do so. There is this idea of only giving the user the amount of privilege they need commonly just called privilege separation. If you happen to use OpenBSD, this is referred to as the least privilege policy. But what about that whole section of weird users in the middle? What if the user can install packages, but nothing else? What if the user exists to run a system utility, but nothing else? What if the user is a separate user that exists just for running a service like a web server and nothing else? Are these users privileged users or not? Because in some cases, they would have higher privilege to certain files than your regular user account would. It's kinda weird. The answer is kinda yes and no, depending on how you want to frame it. In reality, even though these terms privileged and unprivileged users exist, there's not really a hard set in stone definition of what is and is not in one of these categories. It's more like a sliding scale, a spectrum, whatever term you want to be using. And when I gave the example of a user account, I only use that example because that is one you're going to know. I'm not even saying it's very clearly on one side of the spectrum. You can very easily make an account that is less privileged than your regular user account. The easiest example of this is with a guest account. Your regular user probably has the ability to install, remove, and update packages. But if you have a guest user, is that something you want them to be doing? Very likely not. So your regular user is more privileged than a random guest account, but you could go even further than this. You could make an account that is completely unusable for day-to-day -day operations, an account that exists solely for the purpose of running a service. And you'll see this fairly commonly when running a web server. You make a dedicated account just for the web server, and the only thing you give it access to is what it needs to run the web server. You don't give it access to the entire root directory, your entire home directory, you only give it access to this very tiny part of the tree. And especially with a web server, a database, anything like that, there is a very good reason why you might want to do this. Security is hard. Who would have thought? No matter what security measures you put in place, no matter how great your password is or anything else you do, security is hard and sometimes the software you're running or something else in your system is going to lead to a vulnerability that can compromise your account. So if that account does get compromised, 
it is much better to separate that out from the rest of your system so the amount of damage that is done is as minimal as possible. But due to what you're going to be doing with this account, it's very likely that this remains an account that you can still log into. But what about an account that you can't log into? Now on your system, you very likely think you only have maybe your root user and your regular user account. Maybe you have an account for someone else, maybe you have a guest account, but you probably have no idea how many accounts you actually have on your system. So I'm going to show you. If you go and run cat slash Etsy slash password, this will list out all of the accounts. And you're going to notice a bunch of extra accounts. Now, some of these accounts you're not going to have, but you are likely or almost certainly going to have more than the accounts you think you have. Now, this is the important part. The last bit at the end tells you the shell being used by that account. So my root account is using Bash, my user account is using ZSH, but you're going to notice a lot of the accounts in here say slash user slash bin slash no login. This isn't some weird shell you've never heard of. This is basically a management utility. So that if anyone tries to log into that account, it tells you you can't log into that account. You're being stupid. So none of those accounts can be logged into. But all of these are very important accounts. Like you have all of these system D accounts in here used for managing various system D utilities and all of these various other accounts made by different utilities on your system. A lot of these accounts are very powerful accounts, but the user doesn't have the privilege to log in. So is it a privileged account? Is it an unprivileged account? Well, it's sort of a bit of both. Where on the spectrum do these accounts fall? Obviously, many of them maintain critically important parts of your system. And in that way, they are very privileged users. But if they don't have the ability to log in, in that way, they are completely unprivileged and less privileged than a regular user account, less privileged than a guest account, and in many ways, less privileged than the account that you have just to manage something like a web server. The only thing on this spectrum that is really obvious is the super user. This user is more privileged than every other user. But everything else, it's sort of a mix of certain levels of privilege, certain level of unprivileged, depending on what that account is supposed to be doing. Whilst being useful terms at a very high level when speaking generally about system management, the terms privileged and unprivileged in a real world context very quickly start to fall apart when you're talking about more than just the root account and the user account. So rather than leading to more confusion about what you were discussing, try to be a bit more specific about the style of account you are talking about. If you mean the root user, the super user, then say that's what you mean. If you mean a service account, a application account, a system account, then say that's what you are talking about or any other variation of account or user structure that might exist out there. If the user account has more privileges than another user, is it really an unprivileged account? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you disagree with everything I've said today. I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly, Berape, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I have literally no idea how to spell privilege. Hey,